What's going on everybody? It's Andrew from IS Faster here today and I wanted to make a quick video for you all describing five things that I hate about my Lexus ISF. Um, I had to think about them for a little bit because there are a lot of attributes to like about this ISF, but if I did have to pick five things, I got them here on this video ready for you. So uh, stay tuned and find out. So the first thing that I hate about my Lexus ISF is right here this is the oil temperature gauge and it's warmed up it's at, it's a you'd see it under normal just daily usage but um that oil will get all the way up to here the very top h uh, you know hot blinking there will be a indicator that says oil temperature too high up here and um that is the first thing that i hate about my car and I hate this because here in Southern California, it's a little bit warm, you know, um, track days, you know, you can see all the way up into the hundred degree uh, days. So, you know, it's kind of uh, sad when you have to back off um, after about five or six laps because your oil is too hot. I know this car was made for the track and um, I don't know if Fuji International uh, Speedway does not get very hot because when the Lexus engineers were developing this car there's no way that the oil didn't get too hot on them so it's kind of a shame that they didn't um, add some sort of auxiliary oil cooler to this car um, mind you if the uh, temperature is under 80 degrees or so usually you can um, you know the oil doesn't get too hot but if it's over that it's going to get you know it's going to get too hot to to run at full tilt um, I, I run my car pretty hard at the track because I'm trying to extract as much power, trying to get the fastest times. So, you know, that happens more often than not if, if, if I'm, uh, you know, there during a, uh, a warmer day. So I try and right now I just try and run during the winter time when, when it is cooler. And if it is, um, just like I had a, a track day, uh, this uh, last week, it was in the 60 degrees, yeah, 60, 65 degrees. So n no problem at all that day with oil temperatures. So that was a great, um, um, experience but on the days that it is past 80 degrees you're gonna have to cool down or do something else to uh, keep those oil temperatures down now I know Lexus did fix this on the RCF and GSF so that was good for them um, for doing that but not sure why they didn't fix this during some maybe a mid-cycle refresh for the ISF um, you know this car was made from 2008 to 2014 and I know that those first couple uh, uh, years people had to have been complaining about that oil temperature so it's kind of a uh, you know a problem that they should have fixed but they didn't address it luckily there are companies like rr racing and figs that uh that created auxiliary oil coolers for the consumers to not you know to give them an option so that their oil doesn't get so hot on track so um that's that, that's pretty much my first complaint one of the biggest gripes that i have and one of the uh things that i hate about my lexus isf and the second thing that I hate about my Lexus ISF are the pizza cutter thin tires that this car came with. This car came with 225 wide tires in the front and 255 wide tires in the rear. Whoever thought that would be a good idea for a car with this much power and torque um, and is track focused is needs to get their head examined because all you get with 255 wide rear tires, tire spin. All you get with the front at 225 wide, understeer. So whoever thought that that, would, that was a good idea, yeah, I, I, it boggles my mind why they, they even chose that size tire. And to make matters worse, during 2012, they upped the uh, wheel sizes a half inch in the front and rear, and they thought it would still be a good idea to use these same narrow tires. So it's just kind of strange that they would put these kind of, you know, cheap, non-track ready tires on this car from the factory because nobody that drove this car on track could have signed off that those tires would be good for this car. Luckily, there's mo uh, you know, there are wider uh, tires for the ISF and most of us and most of the guys that I know that have this car have upgraded to um, a favorite size is 245s in front, 275s in back. I've actually gone up to 255s in front and 285s in back and they fit. There's no issues with um, fitment. There's no rubbing. So I, I, I don't know why that individual would have chosen the, such thin tires to put from the factory.
So that's what I, that's my second thing that I hate. And I'll show you um, the outside of what 255, 285s look like. They're not super bulgy. They're not, uh, uh, you know, ridiculously huge. They're, you didn't do anything camber things you have to have adjustable adjustable suspension on your car to make this fit it just should have been what the car came with from the factory and just to show you here here are the 255s i actually have you know as you may know swift swift springs on the front so you know no fitment no rubbing issues um not super bulgy or anything it just fills it up very nicely and um you definitely feel the extra grip that these tires add to your car. Here's the 285s and back. You know, it's not like they're too big. Um, shoulders out on the tires, you know, really fills it in real well. So it definitely gives the um, car the grip uh, that it deserves. And now the third thing that I hate about my Lexus ISF is, uh, well, you're looking at it right here the rear seats um well first of all there is no rear center seat so just in case you want to carry a fifth person you can't because there's nowhere for them to sit i don't even think there's a seat belt for them even if the uh even if you wanted to try and uh, let them sit on that plastic and the rear is pretty small too you know i am six feet tall uh this is my normal driving position if i am you know to sit in the back seat here with a driver that's six feet tall this is what you're looking at and um, that can't be very fun for anybody that has to sit there for any length of time you know there's barely any headroom here I mean my head's not really touching but yeah there's uh, not much of uh, any back seat for any adult that has any uh, height to them uh, the seats are nice though. They, they, you know, they feel good bolstered well for the rear, but um, Unfortunately, there is no rear seat. You know, you, you can get um, a GSF if you need that extra um, Couple inches in the back, but unfortunately this ISF doesn't have those inches. So uh, they, This is the third thing that I hate about my Lexus ISF is just no 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 rear seat back here. Oh, well now the fourth thing that I hate about my Lexus ISF is the stock exhaust system that came on this car. Um, it's actually really sad that Lexus restricted this exhaust system because a lot of people might not even know that this car has a V8 in it because it's just so quiet stock. Um, and the numbers that people get from aftermarket exhaust systems, especially headers, goes to show how restrictive this, this car came from the factory. I've seen the dyno numbers. I've seen people with uh, putting on the header systems um, for this car, mainly from PPE or Siki, and getting 30, 35, sometimes 40 wheel horsepower from just the headers, which is pretty extraordinary. Um, with the catback systems, I'm seeing between 15 and 20 wheel horsepower from uh, the dynos, but uh, it, that's still pretty good. But it's just unreal that headers are adding that much horsepower. And a lot of people that have the, uh, just the, in, you know, the intake, which is pretty negligible on the uh, horsepower gains and uh, headers and exhaust, they're getting close to, they're, you know, they're eclipsing the 400 wheel horsepower mark, you know, which puts it right around 500 uh, to, uh, you know, horsepower at the flywheel, which is pretty crazy because this car came with 416 horsepower and, um, you know, to gain... 84 horsepower you're nearly 84 horsepower from just an exhaust system is pretty extraordinary um i think lexus really missed the mark they could have um added you know they could have done something with the exhaust to extract maybe 20 30 more horsepower and um and you know pump their number up a little bit now i know uh this was an m3 fighter the m3 at the time had i think 414 horsepower and um the c63 of the era had i think the lower end was 450 or so and there's a um, performance version i want to say it's in like the 480 range somewhere around there and then there was the uh, audi rs4 which had right around 450 horsepower too so i really think that lexus could have done something to this exhaust system to at least get it up to the um, amg and rs models that they were competing against um, because you know this this car it's 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 a sleeper uh, not many people bought it um, production numbers show that and i th really think they could have 
help that if they would have added a little bit more horsepower from the factory. Now, um, I only have an, uh, uh, a cat catback exhaust on my car, and it sounds pretty good. It's not the animal that these cars with the headers have, because those ones with the uh, because the cars with the headers and exhaust system just sound like complete animals. Especially if they're fully decatted, this car sounds nasty with those um, with that exhaust system. Um, I didn't opt for that because I kind of like the, the tamer growl and it still gives it a little bit of a rumble. Nothing like some of those cars with the full exhaust systems. Those just sound ridiculous, um, in a good way. But, uh, but I, I, I kept it with just a, a cat back system. And, uh, let me show you a real uh, quick clip of what this car sounds like. And it's a shame that Lexus did not open this up a little bit more from the factory because they really could have, uh, done themselves, uh, you know, I gained some points with the with the tuner crowd and whatnot by letting this car breathe a little on the back end. So here's an exhaust clip of my X Force Catback exhaust. This is not a, a cold start. This is you know the, the car is warm, just like my you know my oil is up to temperature. So let me uh, post that up for you and do a couple of revs. <laughs> So hopefully you enjoyed that um, short clip. You know, it wasn't a cold start. It was a uh, warm start. And, um, you know, start, ex please excuse the uh, camera microphone cutting out. I'm just using my iPhone for these videos. So uh, maybe it gets too loud or something and it just kind of cuts. So, um, but you can get the gist of what this car sounds like with just an X-Force catback exhaust system on it. You can go look up a lot of other videos with cars with the full P uh, PPE or sicky headers and, um, on YouTube and they sound really good. So, um, I encourage you to go check those out, but, um, you know, that, that just goes to show you how good this car can sound and how Lexus really missed the mark on having a really good sounding IS set from the factory. Unfortunately, I don't have a video of my car when it was stock because it was so bad. I didn't ever want to remember how bad it sounded, uh, and how quiet it was stock. And now the fifth thing that I hate about my Lexus ISF are the stock drilled rotors that came on this car um mind you they they stop very well um street canyons track wherever they work but unfortunately under extreme use especially during track days they crack they form cracks in those holes and um they they they, they become unusable once those cracks get too big um, now I understand why they use drilled because you know it, uh, it extracts gases during the uh, braking, cools them down a little bit, but it's not cooling them down enough because they're cracking because of that extreme heat. Now, if you just street drive, um, you're probably not going to get these thing uh, these rotors hot enough to crack. But if you're on the track, you definitely will. Um, I changed out my front rotors about 11,000 miles ago, and I have put five track days on them and. I'm going to show you a video next of what they look like. Um, the, this car, I think, should have came with slotted or blank rotors in the uh, in all on all all four corners, but it didn't. I am not sure exactly why they went with um, the drilled rotors. Maybe because they think it looks better. I'm not really sure, but I know for the RCF and GSF, they did transfer two slotted rotors, which is what I think they should have done with this car. Like I said before. I have a 2012, they could have easily uh, remedied this during a, re a mid-cycle refresh, but instead they kept this, uh, they kept the same rotors for seven years on this car, which I don't know why they did that. But uh, let me uh, swap this around. I'm going to get a video of the uh, rotors that I actually changed out last night. I put in new rotors in the front, um, two slotted rotors, but I do have the um, the rotor, uh, the uh, drilled ones um, that I'm going to show you right now, and I'll show you what these cracks look like uh, after extreme abuse. So here are the rotors that I'm telling you about. They still, you can kind of see some the tire chunks that are still in there. But um, this is the inside. Look at these cracks. I mean. 
these are pretty significantly um, significant in size and um, here's the outside this is from five track days and about 11,000 miles of normal street driving so I definitely say I got my money's worth but that's definitely a point that um, Lexus could have switch, uh, switched over to a slotted rotor, especially during testing. They had to have cracked their drilled rotors on the ISFs that they tested on track. So I'm glad I moved over to slotted ones. We'll see how they do in, in due time. I'll give you a little preview. Um, here's these slotted ones. I mean, there's probably... I don't know, less than five miles on them so far. So I still need to bed those uh, brake pads in and uh, you know get those there. But we'll see how, uh, how these hold up on track and street duty. But these, um, they fit well, they, 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 they went on nicely. They look to be the same dimensions as the OEM. So only time will tell how these do. So there you have it. The five things that I hate about my Lexus ISF. Um, you know, I really do like this car. It's a great car, but if I did have to pick five things, those would be the five. Luckily, you can fix most of those by using aftermarket parts, um, pretty much correcting the mistakes that Lexus didn't. Um, so I hope you like this video. I hope you learned something. And um, if, you did, uh, if you did like it, please hit the like button, subscribe, and uh, I'll be releasing the five things that I love about my Lexus ISF pretty soon. Thanks again.